Welcome back to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm Jimmy Bucciolato. I'm Scott Bernstein. Here with my partner in crime. And uh, we're uh, happy to have our friend Michael Francis join us on the phone. Hi, Michael. How are you? Uh, we're doing well, thank you. So um, one of the reasons why we, we were happy to have Michael call in is he is actually going to be in Detroit this weekend, which is our hometown. And uh, also, shameless self-promotion, uh, this is Michael's second appearance on our show. He was kind enough to do a, a really lengthy interview with us a few years ago, which is even now our most downloaded episode. So we're always happy to speak with with Michael when he has some time. Um, so, Michael, uh, we're looking forward to you visiting Detroit. Uh, what's going on this weekend? Yeah, looking forward to it also. I'll be back at the Andiamo showroom on the 18th, that's Saturday night. And we were there last year. We had a great time. You know, they filled the room. And, uh, you know, I got into some life stories and some stories that people haven't heard before about my former life. And uh, then we did a Q&A. People loved that. And then we had a, a VIP book signing and photo session afterwards. It was just a great night. And before that, I had the uh, good fortune of eating at Joe's restaurant there. And it was terrific. So, I'm looking forward to it again this year. I think they got a, a, a very good crowd coming. And then on Monday, the 20th, you know, I have a wine label now branded in my name, Franzi's Wine, that we've had now for the last year, really growing. So we're doing a wine tasting and pairing at Joe's Restaurant, the Andiamo. So uh, it's going to be a good couple of days. Is it the same? Is the wine tasting at the showroom? For people that are in Detroit, uh, there are a number of Andiamo uh, locations, and the one in Warren on 14 Mile and Van Dyke is it's the, actually the original one that was that start was the flagship that started the whole brand 30 plus years ago. Um, now, as I said, there's you can't go a couple miles in Detroit without seeing an Andiamo. Uh, so, is it at the on Mon I know on Saturday it's in, it's at the showroom. Is that Monday's at the showroom as well? You know, that's a good question. I believe it's at the restaurant, you know, adjacent to the show. Okay. I'm pretty sure, but I would check that out just to be certain. I think you can go online and find out. It's probably up there already, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's at the same location. Okay. Yeah. If you go to Andiamo's website and we've promoted it on our social media, by the way, if you people who are following us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, uh, we've, we've, posted uh, information and links to the um, to the event. So hopefully people will will take advantage of that. Um, any uh, insight, special insight into some of the stories that that uh, people can look forward to this weekend? You know, interestingly enough, I had mentioned something on the last interview that I did about some information that I had about Hoffa that I was sitting on for quite a long time. And I didn't realize what kind of stir it would cause that people have reached out to me, both from law enforcement and other areas. And the reason I say I've been sitting on it for a long time is because, you know, I, I, I can't give closure on this. I think I, I have information that's very credible, um, but I can't provide closure to the family at this point with the information that I have. So I just sat on it. Uh, you know, I never put it out there. I never said anything. I have some taped recorded information from it from somebody that, uh, you know, I really trust very much. But uh, <laughs> I mentioned it and I'm probably going to get a little more heat now is that everybody's reached out to me. And I'm actually having a few meetings when I get into Detroit because I, I said, look, I'll shed the light that I have and you people can take it from there. I'm not looking for anything. I don't want anything. I've been I've been knowing this for years now. Uh, but maybe it's time to just put it out there and see what people can do. It might be helpful um, with other information that they have uh, to try to help to put this thing together. So that's that's something that's happening. I might talk about it that night. But there's some things that, you know, I don't mention on my YouTube channel or, or any other place that uh, I can share with the audience there that night. And I think they'll be really interested in that. And, and uh, you we'll and take it from there. That sounds fun. And you and you have a new book out as well, right? You're going to be talking about the book. Yeah, my new book, Mafia Democracy, um, is out. And uh, yeah, I was on Fox News the other night. They they picked up on it. And it looks like I'm going to be going back there. So yeah, it's very hard hitting. It's, uh, you know, my impression, and uh, I think it's very right on, that our government is acting more like the mafia now than I've ever seen in my lifetime. So, um, and the book has done very well. People are 
you know, the, the satisfying thing is the comments that I get on the book is that, hey, Michael, now we get it. Now we see it. Now we understand it. And, you know, my goal in that was just to make people aware and hold our government accountable so that we can maintain the, you know, uh, democratic republic that we've, we've had and that this country was set up to be. So uh, hopefully, you know, I do my part in enlightening people. Well, we know you're a prolific author and involved in Hollywood projects and other things. Is, it, is this something you, you, you think you might want to continue, like in more of the realm of political science? Or is uh, we'll just see what happens? Yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, look, I'm, the meeting I'm in right now is that they're trying to make a television series based upon my life. and uh, Long overdue, Michael. Already. Long overdue. Yeah, you know, I, I, so many people have come to me over the years, and I always said no, mainly because you know, discussing with my wife, she said, you know, we, we don't really need to do that. But I told her when this group came to me, I said, look, you know, it's going to happen at some point, <laughs> whether I'm dead or alive. And w we may as well, you know, contribute to it because let's get it right. If we're going to do it, we don't want it happening later on. And so she finally agreed. And I'm, I'm with a group that I'm very, very happy with. And it uh, looks like it's definitely going forward. It's a scripted series. Uh, for television. And I'm very happy. I spent probably 50 hours with the writer on it. And I'm happy with the result at this point. So uh, this this meeting is involving that and the next steps to get it you know, on the air. That's that's amazing. Michael, is there any way as we wrap up here, we can just go back for one second to the uh, Jimmy Hoffa? Um, are you aware that one of the Andiamos right now is the, the restaurant where Hoffa disappeared from? Uh, yes, I am. Um, I know that. Uh, I didn't time it this way. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah, somebody actually came to me in the weeks leading up to my going to the Andiamo and with some information that sounds pretty credible to me, coupled with what I know. And I'm going to be meeting with that person. And like I said, law enforcement is already involved in this. Yep. They've already reached out to me. So um, again, I don't want to promise anybody anything. I don't know where it's going to go or where it's going to end up. You know, there's a lot of people that have said things about Hoffa that turned out not to be true. And yep. I don't want to be one of those. Um, and that's why I've sat on this, but, you know, on the other hand, if I can be helpful in bringing some closure to this, because I, guys, I got to tell you this, wherever I go over the past 25 years, when I open it up for a Q and a always the question, do you know where Jimmy Hoffa is buried? <laughs> yep. It never fails. So, you know, this is it's it's phenomenal that, you know, all over the world, people are aware of this. So if, if we can be helpful in that regard, great. And if not, you know, there'll be nothing lost. So most iconic unsolved crime in American history. Uh, last question I have regarding this is, did you know, for people that might not know, I'm guessing everybody knows this. Uh, Michael Francis's dad, Sonny was the legend's legend you know our our podcast is called the og and i think if you pull up a dictionary and you look at the term og sonny francis's face is going to be staring right back at you um did you know of any relationship that's that your father had with the guys in detroit the jackaloni brothers or the toco brothers uh joe is really you know, we well, yeah, we talked about that, especially Zarelli. My dad didn't know them, um, never got into the business that he had with them, if anything. Uh, but my dad was pretty well known. You know? Yes, and, he was. You know, so, so um, you know, I, I don't know, again, any specifics, but I know that he did know them. And the Detroit, for, or again, for people that might not know this, the Detroit uh, family, the LCN family in Detroit, had very, very deep connections into the family that Michael belonged to the Columbos, which before the Columbos were the Profacci's and uh, Joe Profacci, who was one of the original godfathers uh, in New York City, married off both of his daughters to the mafia princes of Detroit in the night in the early 19 or late 1940s, early 1950s. So uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a nexus and a lot of cross uh, a, a cross section of of the uh, of business was kind of going in between uh, Mr. Zarelli and Mr. Toko, who whose sons were married to the, the daughters of Mr. Profaci. That's correct. And Salvatore Profaci, who died a couple of years ago, uh, you know, his or all the Profaci boys, their their sisters are they live in Detroit. Uh, they're you know 
they're amazing women. I just want to say I, I was able to uh, get to know Rosalie a little bit, who was um, Tony's really wife and just an amazing woman. And I'm sure uh, Millie Toko is is the same. Well, let me ask you what I know you you're you're uh, in the middle of something, Michael. Let's just uh, one last thing I want to ask you. The last time we talked to you, your father was still with us. And that is that is no longer the case. So we want to give you our condolences. Uh, any any uh, one one comment uh, about uh, your father before we wrap up? No, you know, listen, he's it, sorely missed. I mean, it's three years ago in this month that he passed away. Um, well, I will tell you this, you know, February 2020, my dad suddenly got ill. It was a respiratory situation. He was pretty healthy up to that point, even at 103. And within a week, he went into the hospital and he had passed. And I really do believe it was COVID at the time. It was just coming upon us. Nobody knew what it really was. But I think he was one of the first COVID victims here in the States, unfortunately. Um, they, they didn't diagnose it as that later on. But, um, you know, but I believe that. So, I mean, it's sad to hear that. And, you know, my dad is missed, obviously. But, you know, what could you do? But. You know, look at it this way. He lived to 103. He was the oldest made man in America. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Dad. Remarkable. <laughs> and and most likely the oldest made man in the world. Yeah. I don't think anybody's lived in that life to that age. And, that's and your, your father's name and yeah. reputation and the fact that he was so beloved and respected, it was something that really rang from continent to continent. It wasn't just in America. The You know, Sonny Francis, people knew him all around the world. and. Uh, at for, before there was John Gotti, you know, in terms of the, the way that the papers covered these guys. I mean, Sonny Francis was a was a marquee, like leading man in in the New York media's you know telling of the the story in the fifties and sixties. You couldn't open a newspaper without seeing Sonny's face. Yeah, and you know, just to say this, and no reflection on John whatsoever, but. My dad had that kind of attention right. before we had the internet, exactly. social media, and all of that. But the difference with him, he didn't want it. You right. know, he shunned right. it. He never talked to the press. He tried to hide from it. I believe me, we would run for it. I remember John Gotti was was a was didn't doesn't hold a candle to your father. Your father, yeah. John Gotti, um, wishes he he was your father. Well. You know, I, I'm, you said it, not me. Yeah. But. <laughs> and that's no. I mean, I, I just you know, I think Gotti's. And not to get too, yeah. you know, into the weeds here. I think God, he's probably the most overrated mob, mafia figure of all time in terms of what he actually did and, and the time period he did it. Uh, but I guess that's that's neither here nor there. But yes, your 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 father was the real deal and and did not court the media the way that uh, John did. Not at all. He He ran from it. My dad, you know, rather than drive in a limousine, he he had a red. I'll never forget. My mother used to be horrified. She wouldn't get in it. He would drive around in a red Plymouth Valiant that <laughs> she didn't even want him to park it in our driveway. And he said, you know, what do I need? I don't need anything. It runs good. Somebody gave it to him. He didn't want to have to buy it. So, you know, that that was my dad. He wasn't looking for that attention at all. And But he got it because of who he was and the way he carried himself. And what he really was all about, you know, people just respected him. But, you know, my dad taught me something and uh, it, it's worked for me in my life. He said to me, you know, Michael, remember this, always be respectful, kind and nice to the little people. Now, he didn't mean the little people disrespectfully. It was just his way of a saying it. he didn't mean it to be offensive. But he said, you know, take care of the waiter, take care of the valet parker, smile when you go into the store and say hello to somebody. He said, those are the people that make you strong. And I noticed that throughout my life with my dad. We would go to the Copacabana. He was the king there. And he treated everybody with respect. I don't care who walked in. When my dad walked in, he was the guy. You know, and various places that I saw, you know, the way people treated him um, and the way he responded to it. You know, he didn't have that kind of I am who I am attitude. He was very kind to people. And, you know, he taught me, he brought me up that way, and it's worked for me in my life. And, uh, you know, it's one of the many things that he taught me that um, worked for me in my life later on. And, you know, the benefit that I had is I really listened to my dad. So, you know, he was he was helpful. He taught me a lot. He was one of a kind. And believe me, I knew everybody. You know, being in the success that I had in that life, I, I met up with a lot of guys, different crews, different families. 
I respected them, but honestly, my dad was one of a kind. No question. Great head of hair. For someone that's followed <laughs> the end, challenged right? like myself, <laughs> the, the man end. at 103 had a, a thick head of hair, just like he did in his heyday. <laughs> yeah. uh, just uh, very, yeah. uh, like you said, out of central casting and uh, was maybe just, you know, a legend. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that with us, Michael. And by the way, for our listeners, if you're in Detroit, please check out Michael at Andiamo this weekend. The information is online. It's on our social media. Michael, we appreciate your time and uh, hopefully we will uh, talk to you soon and spend a little bit more time talking about this. For sure, guys. Anytime. And, you know, thank you for uh, understanding I'm in this meeting. But anytime you guys want to get together, just let me know, reach out, and we'll do it. Enjoy, okay. enjoy Detroit and enjoy your meetings. And I'm sure that uh, everybody that heads out to Andiamo on Saturday and then on Monday, uh, which, by the way, we just were able to confirm it's all at the, the Andiamo in Warren, the showroom at 14 and Van Dyke. Uh, you're going to get your money's worth plus some because this is the kind of stuff that doesn't happen every day. Uh, the insight, the perspective, how polished Michael is, how well-spoken he is, how, uh, you know, the type of storyteller he is, uh, you're going to get a lot of bang for your buck. So go check it out. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Thanks again, Michael. Gentlemen, thanks a lot. Take thanks care. You, Michael. Appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye now.